Hey girl. Hey girl. This is the Friendly Black Girls Podcast. I'm Carmen. I'm Tyler Janae. And we We are are the Friendly Friendly Black Black Girls. This podcast is all about friendship and fabulosity. And if you're ready to have some real girl talk, you're in the right place. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Black Girl Social Club so you'll never miss an episode and maybe you will find some other friendly black girls along the way. Hey, girl, what's going on? Everything's good with me. How is everything going with you, Carmen? I'm pretty good. I am so glad to have you here in the A with us. I'm super excited to be here, and this is going to be such an amazing opportunity for us to do some real girl talk. I'm excited. So how was your flight from L.A.? Because you're from L.A. Yes, yes, from L.A., born and raised. I love the city. Um, But, you know, I have a very special place in my heart for Atlanta, being a CAU grad. That's right, HBCU love. Mm -hmm, Always. Now tell me about these nails, because you and I were talking about your nails earlier. Mm -hmm. You're doing the press-on nail situation. Tell me about it. What's going on? Because I'm super scared to do press-ons. Yeah, okay. So I've been a press-on girl my whole life. I'm okay. a press-on girl, but a nail girl my whole life, right? Mm-hmm. And recently, you know, t- times is tough, you know? <laughs> so I had to find some ways to cut some costs. And I'm like, you know what? Let me try to give press-ons a chance. So I like them. I got to get better glue because, you know, mm-hmm. they they pop off. You know, they do. But I heard Marseille Martin has her own press-on brand, yes. right? Yes. And if you're listening, Marseille, we would love to have a sponsorship situation with you, girl. Love you. Nail cam. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're just super excited to have you, Tyler, because we're going to get into some really good conversations here today. One of the things I want to talk about before we kick off, though, is the fatal flaw friendship theory. Have you ever heard about this theory at all? I've seen it in a video once or twice, mm-hmm. but not not as much as I'd like to. Break it down for us. All right. So I was on TikTok, and basically the rule is this. It states that everyone has their own fatal flaw or a flaw that is going to cause you the most distress. And this is every friendship, all right? So once you realize each friend's fatal flaw, you have to do either one of two things, okay? You have to accept it and choose not to be bothered by it. Or you have to rethink the friendship. Okay. Okay. So if the flaw is just so unacceptable that you absolutely cannot deal with it, you have to just cut ties with the friend. Okay. So... What do you think about that theory? I mean, can you think of any friends that you're like, ooh, girl, you got a fatal flaw, and I can't do it? (laughs) Myself, I definitely have some fatal flaws, but... What, what would you say are some examples of a, of a fatal, fatal flaw? So some of the examples that they um, came, with, came up with on um, TikToks is that they constantly need validation... They tell harmful white lies Mm -hmm. or they're always canceling plans at the last minute. Okay, so when I think of those situations, I don't necessarily think those as fatal flaws. When Mm -hmm. I think of fatal flaws, those are like non-negotiables. Like if this happens, we're immediately cutting ties. So when I think of a fatal flaw, I think of somebody who like, you know, might like to try to get other people's ex-boyfriends or, you know, something like that. Just scandal. You know what I mean? Or like lying behind my back. Like that, that's something I would consider a a fatal flaw. What, Mm -hmm. What about you? What do you think? Um, for me, it would definitely be someone that, I don't know. I I feel like fatal flaw is so intense. I feel Mm -hmm. like when you say that term, it's just like so intense. But I feel like what they're actually talking about is not, it's kind of some, some of these things feel like they're a little petty, maybe. But I think if it really means that much to you, then really, you know, it might be a fatal flaw, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think about fatal flaws, I'm thinking about, my mic is just doing the most, um, I think about flaws that are in line with all, someone who's always late. Mm. Like for me, that is something that I just hate. I hate it when I'm dating. I hate it in business. I hate it in friendships. Like someone who is always late. To me, that's a sign of disrespect. It's a sign that you don't value my anything that I have going on. Mm-hmm. So if you always late, I don't really mess with you like that. But I do have a couple of friends that are just always late. Yeah. And I know that about them. And, and so, even if you talk to them, they yeah. still always going to be late. Even if I'm like, hey, girl, I need you to be 30 minutes 
early. Okay. I need you to be changing the time. Yeah, like <laughs> I, it starts at five. I tell her four. Mm-hmm. You know, she's still going to be late. But is that really enough to, you know, not be her friend anymore? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Um, so those little small annoyances. But do you have any? So you said you have a fatal flaw. What is your fatal flaw? I feel like we skipped right over that one. My fatal flaw that my friends tell me all the time is that I flake. Okay. On things. okay. So I, I am a flaker and I'm working on it and I have made a commitment to do better. So my friends out there, I'm trying. Okay. Um, and so... Basically, what happens is I get super excited about an event, right? I see mm-hmm. something on social media. I'm like, ooh, girl, we got to go. Uh-huh. We got to go to this. Um, let's figure out our outfits. And then the day of the event, I'm nice in bed. And I got my, <laughs> my drink and my favorite show is And your man. And my man is in the back, you know. And I'm like, oh, we got two hours left to the event. And then I just don't say anything. And they're like, Tyler, you still coming? Then it's crickets. You know what I mean? Tyler. I know. I know. Okay, so what are you going to do to get better at this? What is your goal for the new year? So I told my friend, I said, look, I said, if I give you an event, I'm going to give a disclaimer that I'm not going to go to all of the events. However, you can choose a few of the events that you really, really want me to go to. And I just cannot flake unless it's an absolute emergency. But we okay. had to have the conversation first. Because okay. at first, I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, I'm like, if I if I can't go, whatever, she'll find somebody else to go. Mm-hmm. But eventually, she had to have the conversation with me. Like, this is affecting our friendship. Wow. So what was that conversation like? It was it was important, but it was, it was scary because I thought I was going to lose her. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I didn't know. And I'm super glad that you brought it to my attention because if you hadn't, I probably would have kept flaking. Mm-hmm. And so that communication is is really important. And that that is a fatal flaw that I do not want to in my friendship. I mean, but I just love the fact that you were open to mm-hmm. receiving that feedback. Because a lot of friends, when you bring stuff like that to their attention, they like... Girl, who you talking to? You know mm-hmm. my mama. Like I'm grown. I'm grown. <laughs> you know, if I come, I come. If I don't, I don't. Situation. Um, so I'm glad that that worked out. When I I'm trying to think of something that would be a fatal flaw that my friends would be like, ooh, this just gets under our skin about this girl. Like, I would say it would probably be the fact that I'm so anal mm. about time. Okay. Like, I'm so anal about time, and my friends now, we joke about it. Um, they always say, well, you know karma going to be on time. Or, <laughs> you know, we can't be late to karma's event because she going to have a fit. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that um, episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta where the girls visited Nene in L.A.? Yes. And she was on, I forgot what show she was on at the time, mm-hmm. right? But she invited them over for dinner, and they had came. The sun was down. She was having a dinner party. Mm-hmm. And she was like, y'all can't come in. And I was like, what you mean? Like, we we traveled to get here. We want to come late. in. Mm-hmm. You know, she's like, but dinner was at 6, and it's 8.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was one of the only people that was really feeling her at that. I was like, yeah, don't let them in, girl. Don't let them in. Because I was here, I was slaving over this food. I was getting these things together in my house. I was extending hospitality and grace and all of that to you all. And you guys basically spit in my face. Y'all showed up two and a half hours late. That's very, I think that is very rude. Okay. I think, you know, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. But when you hit that 30 minute to an hour mark, at that point, it's it's You're doing too much. You're doing too much. So I was in alignment with Miss Nene Leakes on that. Um... So anyway, if you want to do more research on the fatal friendship flaw theory, I think that's what it's called. Look it up on TikTok. Get into it. Let us know if you have any feedback on it. And what is your fatal flaw? All right. So next up, I want to talk about people pleasing. People pleasing. Me and you talk a lot about this off camera. Mm, We have. Um, And so do you consider yourself a people pleaser? I do. So I I believe in the fun astrological sign stuff. Okay. So I am a Pisces and Pisces are known for not trying to hurt people's feelings. Okay. And so usually we we do do little tiny white lies, you know, <laughs> because we don't want to we don't want to hurt someone. And so for me, people pleasing is something I'm also working on because you're starting to hear more people talk about it. Uh, we definitely have somebody come onto the Black Girl Social Club Black Girl Social Club podcast and discuss it. Uh, but for me, 
the biggest thing I people pleased on in the past is allowing my friends. I don't know if, if y'all have ever dealt with this before is when your friends just pull up to you. They just pull up at your house. Oh, I would lose my mind. Unannounced. Hey, girl, what you doing? I was in the area. <sighs> please. I'm not that kind of friend. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all right now, please don't pull up to my house unannounced. Mm-hmm. Please. Okay, so they will pull up to your house. And then what? You and would let them in. I would let them in because I'm like, okay, you know, they're, they're trying to check on me. Maybe I didn't answer the phone call or something. Yeah. But I got to the point where, where they were doing it all the time. And I never brought it up. I never told them how. You know, like, sometimes I want to clean up a little bit. I want to yeah, get myself together. I want to take my bonnet off. Exactly. Let me, let me get you a, let me make sure I got stuff in the fridge so we can, you know, have yeah. a drink or something. And um, it got to the point where I exploded, you know? Mm-hmm. I just got so upset and so frustrated. Now, what, did, what happened when... During this explosion, like what, so what kind of, like, did you get them all on a Zoom call? Did you, was it in person? It was, it was one person in particular. Okay. And we had the conversation and she felt like I overreacted and we're no longer friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So looking back, do you feel like you overreacted or do you feel like you were justified? I feel like I did overreact because I didn't communicate. You know, uh-huh. I didn't I didn't tell her. I feel like I kind of gave hints, you know, like, girl, you got to tell me when you come mm-hmm. when you come over, you know, like, girl, you got to you got to keep me updated. I want to make sure you know I got the house together. But she didn't catch on to those updates. Yeah. You know what? Um, it always sucks when people don't catch on to your little hints. And you're like, you're my friend. Like, like, I'm, like, come on. I'm trying to throw you a nugget here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but I think to your point. I think it's so important that we communicate those things to our friends. I'm a pretty straightforward friend. Mm -hmm. So if something bothers me, I will be like, girl, don't show up at my house no more like that. (laughs) Like my friends know that about me. They just know if I think it, I'm going to say it. And I'm not, you know, it's never about me trying to hurt feelings, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. You know what I mean? So I like um, the delivery too. Like how you were just like, girl. Yeah. I'm more of like, I keep it fun. You know, I'm never really trying to be nasty about it, but I am going to let you know if I got a problem. Um, So here are some signs. If you feel like you are a people pleaser and you're not sure, here are some signs that you might be. Okay. You never say no. That's the first thing. You never say no. Mm -hmm. Um, Me. That's like one of my favorite words. I love saying no. I have to call Carmen up. It's so refreshing. (laughs) If you ever need to tell somebody no, just put me on three way. Okay. Like Carmen, look, what what do I say? How do I say? No. No, (laughs) the answer is no. Um, You start to feel resentment, Um, meaning, you know, you don't want to do something, but you keep doing it. You keep making an effort to um, accommodate people. Yeah. And then that resentment starts to creep in. Like you think you're going to lose them if you say no. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard part. But you're really you're turning you're turning it on them when it really isn't their fault. Right. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they're asking you for something and you're saying yes. But now you're mad at them for asking you when you just didn't say, no, I can't do it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, People easily hurt your feelings. Um, So that might be a sign of people pleasing. You apologize often, meaning you just are always sorry about everything all the time, even if you didn't do something wrong. Did you experience that or do you? For me, I I will. It's easy for me to apologize. Okay. Because you know how some people are like, I'm not gonna apologize if I don't mean it. For me, it's like if it makes you feel better, I I will apologize. I'm still working on that. <laughs> I really am. I'm yeah. still working on that. I I admire people who can just mm-hmm. outright apologize. I'm to like, people. girl, you know what? I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. What can we do to move forward? In the back of my head, I'm like, eh. you tripping? Yes, <laughs> you tripping? You're I'm you're just still like, wrong. You gonna know that you was tripping <laughs> up in here before I do any apologizing? But that's not right. Yeah. I think that's good to apologize to people mm-hmm. if you feel like it's gonna make the situation better. Yeah. Um, but do you think you have to mean it though? For me, I do. And that's kind of why I have trouble doing it. Like, if I do anything, and that's just like my personality, yeah, is I do everything with intention. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean that shit. So, <laughs> it's like, if I don't mean it, then... And I mean, that gets me in trouble in a lot of places. Like, it used to get me in trouble at work when I was working a nine to five. Mm-hmm. It, even in my, you know, relationship, my marriage, that can get me in trouble. I think... It is good to show humility in that way, even if sometimes you don't necessarily mean it all the way. Mm -hmm. Why not? If it's going to salvage your friendship or your relationship. 
Got it. Um, you pretend to agree with people all the time. Like, yeah, girl. <laughs> um, yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah there's nothing wrong. Uh-huh. You what you wasn't tripping. Mm-hmm. And then you go back home and you talk to your other girlfriend like, yeah, she is tripping. <laughs> like, what is up with her? <laughs> and then the last thing is you were terrified of conflict. Um, you find yourself avoiding conflict. Me, mm-hmm. that ain't me. I'm, we on two different sides yeah, of the spectrum I'm like, here. Let's bring on the conflict. <laughs> but it's it's not that I like conflict. It's just that I know that it you have to go through the fire to get to the other side. Like yeah. I understand that conflict is the bridge to the solution mm-hmm. to the issue. Um, but do you find yourself being like kind of scared of of the conflict? Yeah, I get nervous to rock the boat, but I would definitely say starting in 2023, I've done that more often starting last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't lost any any friends in the yeah, last year. You know, you. having the conversation, they're like, wow, Tyler, like I like I'm I'm very happy that you brought that up. And I'm like, good, because yeah. my worst fear is that I'm gonna tell you how I feel about something and you're just gonna be like, I don't need to deal with this, I'm out of here. Yeah. Especially if you're really close to me, you know? That's where I get worried. Well, if anyone doesn't want to be your friend because you come to them about a situation, Mm -hmm. I mean, they really shouldn't be your friend. You know what I mean? So I think that's something we have to remember is that conflict. I think conflict has such a negative connotation. Um, And I just I wish that we could all understand that sometimes it just gets us to the next the next phase in life. Um, It's about growth. So speaking of conflict and speaking of all of this good stuff that we talked about when it comes to boundaries and and all of that good stuff, we have a guest today by the name of Katie. She's going to be joining us virtually. Oh, there she is. Our Hello. guest. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys today? Good. Welcome to the Friendly Black Girls Podcast. Welcome. <laughs> we're excited to have you. Um, and where are you calling from today? So today I'm calling from my hometown, Memphis, because I've been on a road trip. Um, and this is my midpoint, uh, but I'm based in Los Angeles. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about you before we get into all the good stuff. Awesome. So I am a musical artist, well, multidisciplinary, but primarily music that makes content on the internet, which I got into as most people did during the pandemic because the studios were closed. There were there was nothing to book. So I just started running my mouth on the internet. And one thing led to another. And next thing I knew, I had like a quarter million followers on TikTok and now 30K <laughs> on Instagram. Um, and so when I'm not in the studio, I am gabbing. So my favorite. <laughs> well, we love your gabbing. It, 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 we found you online and we are so glad that we did. Um, one of the videos that we posted from you, I mean, went viral. It got a lot of good um, engagement. So I want to play just a snippet of that video before we get into our conversation. People say things like, oh my God, you're so helpful. You help me grow so much. I would love to be your friend. But those are actually the opposite of the types of friendships I pursue. I do not seek to be useful to people. I have very intentionally cultivated friendships in which the benefit is their joy of being in my presence. Okay, I'm just going to stop it right there because there's so much that we need to talk about. But um, what were you thinking when you made that video? What prompted you to make that content? Yeah, so <laughs> honestly, that first line, because because I talk so much on the internet and it's usually about interpersonal relationships, whether it's romantic or platonic, people do, they DM me a lot and they're like, I wanna be best friends with you, you seem so cool, you've helped me so much. And I just wanna say, I am so grateful for that. That makes me so happy that when I open my mouth, people feel like things change for them. But it also reminded me that from people on the internet to people in my life, that has always happened to me. People were like, Katie, you're so smart. You're so insightful. I feel like I grow every time we talk. I want to be friends with you. I want to be friends with you. And I I just, I wanted, it, it popped in my head. So I wanted to say, I was like, I love that. Thank you so much. But that is not actually how I vet my friendships. And so that, that was, no, I get it. Like, 
being the useful friend. Like you said, that really stuck with me. I avoid being useful in friendships. So when we talk about being useful in friendships, what does that mean to you? Like, what does that mean when you said being useful in friendships? Can you break it down a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, I think that was the point that triggered a lot of people. Uh, but I, I phrased it that way, you know, because I kind of knew it would, but because I wanted to refer <laughs> to relationships that that is why they exist. Like they, they come from this point of like, hey, you would be useful. We should be friends. And so that was kind of like the boundary I had to start setting for myself as I got older, because um, I think you guys at some point in the show talk about <laughs> setting boundaries and saying no to avoid resentment. And that was what was happening. I would be like, OK, I can't help. And so I would say yes all the time because I could. And then I'd be drained and I'd be tired and there'd be like nothing left over for me. And I would just really get like the heebie-jeebies every time those people would hit the phone. I'm like, I don't like this person. And then I had to stop and go, why? Because you don't know how, know how to say no. You can say no. Just because you can doesn't mean you have to. And so mm -hmm. it put me in a place where I had to take a look and go, who is calling me because they really enjoy talking to me? Who is calling me because they would like to spend time with me? And who is calling me because they cannot afford a therapist, you know? Ooh, ooh. Who is calling me because they cannot afford a therapist? Woo. Wow. Let's I get am in. not licensed. Let's get into it. So Tyler, <laughs> we were talking about your friendships earlier and how you feel like you might be considered a people pleaser. Can you relate to what Katie's saying? You want to add anything to that? A hundred percent. So uh, for me as a friend, I do feel like I am the useful friend, right? I feel like a lot of my friends come to me and they're like, hey girl, like I know you're in this group. Can you help me get this contact? Can you help me get this information? Or I'll be sending jobs and sending opportunities. I think that's just who I am as an individual. But I think the really important piece that you brought up is the fact that that should not be the only reason why somebody wants to be friends mm -hmm, with you mm -hmm. because you can tell right because when when the opportunities stop coming then the calls stop coming and the texts <laughs> stop coming and next thing you know you feel used and taken advantage of um however i still think that it's okay to be useful in a friendship right i want my friends to you know vouch for me and find mm -hmm. opportunities for me i feel like we should be doing that for each other but when we're not reciprocating that's when the issue comes up yeah so Katie, tell us about what kind of friends you actually are looking for. How do you vet your friends and what kind of friends do you like to be around? Yes, that's, I love that question because something that I do talk about a lot is that the same way you should have like a list and an ideal of the type of partner romantically that you want in your life, you should actually be as intentional with your friends. And so you start Ooh. with a place of what do I like to do first and foremost? Like, what do I enjoy? Um, so something that I like to do is I like going to coffee shops and I like astrology and I like, and so there's all these things. And so I, when I meet people, I will have lighthearted conversations where we'll talk about topical things because that's, that's the first thing. I think a lot of people, they connect over what they're going through, which I get and I totally understand and there's space for that. But like, I have like kind of retrained my brain to where like, that's not how you should introduce yourself to somebody. It should just be, here's who I am, here's what I enjoy. So you guys have time to understand what you like. And so the first thing I'm looking for is who has the same hobbies and lifestyle as me. And then mm -hmm. uh, maybe even first, uh, who has like the same like life goals, who has the same, um, I don't know, like core values, like that's the biggest one for me because especially as somebody in the entertainment business, there's people who I have a lot in common with interest wise, but then, you know, you get really emotionally attached to that person. Time goes by and you realize like, wow, they are kind of going down a completely different path that I'm not interested in. For sure. And then when you try to bring it up at that point, then you're judgy or you think you're better than someone. <laughs> and so... I try to have those conversations earlier on, not like, what are your values? But there are always topics you can bring up that help to reveal these things. Um, and then also, if you're not trauma dumping on people, it leaves space to learn this mm -hmm. before you get attached. Like, it's just like, it's just like regular dating. So it's like, I'll go to spaces that I enjoy because guess what? People that enjoy those same things will likely be there. Like, I'll go to um, yeah. plant swaps because I like 
gardening. I'll go to like book club stuff because already it's pre it's pre vetted. These women are already here because we're already interested in the same thing. And all I have to do is talk to them, have a conversation and see if chemistry can grow. But yeah, it's like, do we have the same things in common so that we do have things to do and things to talk about outside of relationships and situations? Um, and do we have uh, similar life visions for ourselves? Do we have the same values? Mm hmm. For sure. I love that. Mm hmm. What? So my question for you is, how do you shoot your friend shot? Right. <laughs> you see somebody out there and you're like, oh, this person seems like we have some some similarities. Like, what, what would you do in order to, you know, let them know, like, hey, let's let's hang out. Yeah, um, I, ca I call it like the art of noticing. And so really all you have to do is notice things about the person that you want to talk to because one, people love hearing about themselves, right? They, lo they love an invitation <laughs> to like talk about okay. themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's like the easy, cause oh my God, every time I talk about being likable, they call it people pleasing. Like it's not the same thing. Being likable is just kind of positioning yourself. <laughs> like people pleasing, there's a suppression of self, but like being mm -hmm. likable just means you are keeping the vibe good essentially. So it's like you walk up to, so I would go like, I don't know, like if, you had like a necklace on. I'm like, oh my God, that necklace is really cute. Um, it looks like it's made from like blah, blah, blah type of metal. Um, I actually am really into different types of metals because I used to read about da da da, -da healing properties. Is that where why, why you bought it or where did you get it? Like things that really open the floor for people to talk Can about. Can I just say, I would totally be your friend, right? If you came up to me and said that, I would be like, yes. She gets it. Take me on a date <laughs> right now, friend date. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is. Like I, I take a moment to really notice something that's true. Like, cause I mean, there's nothing wrong with like a, you look cute or I love your shirt, but if you can tell people why you notice them and what you like, like that is gonna like let the defenses drop and it's gonna allow them to easily talk about themselves without them feeling self-conscious. And that's really like the biggest thing. Like, can you open the floor for a conversation where a person doesn't have to feel awkward? Mm -hmm. I think the last question I have for you is where does that confidence come from? Because I feel like it takes a lot of confidence to draw boundaries and set boundaries in relationships, particularly in friendships. Um, so where do you draw that confidence for somebody out there who might not be able to or feel like they can't do that right now in their friendships? For me, I think it really was hitting rock bottom in so many situations that could not be recovered where I just decided like this one, there's nothing to lose. And then two, you know, if I'm starting over completely and I really was out there, like people had really shown me who they were and that I was really only useful to them and they had no interest in involving me in their lives. like there would be no invitations to birthday things like that, nothing ever the phone would just go dry and then when i tried to have those conversations it was like the hostility and so it was like all of that is gone and so starting from scratch using these principles and then if you happen to run into that thing it's easy to reject because you're not or at least it is for me because you're not attached you're not like a core part of my my life yet because then it's just like ah i really don't feel like we're meshing which you really don't have to say to say to people there's ways to kind of like i call slowly off board <laughs> new situations that are not like that you don't want to grow yeah um, off board i like that <laughs> <laughs> off boarding <laughs> i've never heard of it um, that way <laughs> Um, and so, and cause I really don't run into it too much now that I've kind of like done a full reset. And then like, I have only been in Los Angeles for like a year, year and a half. So everything is new. Um, but if I do happen to rub up against it with like maybe a really old relationship that I hadn't engaged in a while or since the reset, it is like carefully having those conversations being like, you know, as they, they do their little trauma dump, I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that that happened and just really hold space for what they've shared and let them know that you care. But, you know, kind of try to pivot like, okay, well, you know, what's been going on with so-and-so or here's what's been going on with me. And like, I do try to throw people like that life rope of like, we can talk about other things and we can connect in other ways. And like, girl, what are you doing Saturday? I just started this new yoga club cl or class. Yeah. But if they keep you know, being resistant, then it is kind of like, uh, you know, like a slow off board. It just is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then some people, and they usually notice and they are really defensive about it. They'll be like, oh, I feel like you don't talk to me as much anymore. And then like, 
uh, I'm always down to have a difficult conversation. Um, and so, I'm, <laughs> and so I'll, yeah, um, I'm a Virgo. So <laughs> if we, if we, Oh, okay. you're a Virgo. Okay. Yeah. I'm an Aries and she's yeah, a so Pisces. Like, <laughs> nice. like if I, if mm -hmm. I, I got to be direct, we, we can do it. We can talk about it. Um, and so, you know, I'll let them know. I'm like, Hey, that really isn't working for me. That isn't great. Um, I don't feel appreciated. Um, and so, yeah, we can, it can be over. Like it's all love, but like, I'm just not comfortable engaging that in that way. So it really is like the confidence of knowing that you have to choose yourself because I hit that rock bottom place. And I'm like, whatever it takes to not feel that anymore. And because that abandonment mm -hmm. was really just an abandonment of self, because like we are here because mm -hmm. we allow people to position us here. And it was like that transfer of accountability is like we can rage out and be angry at other people or we can take a look at the fact that you opened the door. Like people didn't force Oof. you to do these things. You saw these things and you chose to see the best without there being any tangible evidence that people were on the same place as you. It's like you did that. You got to wake up. You got to be real. Okay. Wow. So what I'm hearing is accountability, mm -hmm. taking a look in the mirror. And I feel like sometimes, you know, it can be the other person, but I feel like a conversation can always be had to get to the bottom of whatever issues that might be afoot mm -hmm. um, within your friendships. And I, I really like what you said about uh, people pleasing is basically abandoning yourself, self-abandonment. Mm -hmm. Because when you say it like that, it feels like more Ooh. like you are affecting yourself yeah. by yeah. people pleasing for someone else. So. Yeah, I I heard a really good quote on Kiki Kiki Palmer's podcast recently, and Iyanla was a guest, and she said, "There's a difference between helping and supporting." Hmm. She said, "You don't want to help people. You don't always want to be the helper, the helper, the helper, because when you become the helper, you start doing things, and people, if things go wrong, you become the person to blame, and then resentment comes in, and you may be helping a person in a way that they don't even want to be helped, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're supporting someone," They're asking you to do something and you're doing what they ask you to do and you're being supportive in that way. So um, I think just going back to what we talked about with the boundaries and not abandoning yourself and just um, realizing that you can't always fix everybody. You're not a Yama. Man. I'm not a Yama. I am not certified. Katie's not a Yama. Not everybody wants to be fixed too. And I think that's the hardest thing that people who like to fix situations have to rub up against. It's like some people just want to feel better about the situation so they can run back to it and mm. keep doing it. They don't want to fix it. Yeah, absolutely. Don't say Rochelle, I don't want to be saved. So Katie, where can we find you online? You do a lot of amazing, amazing things besides give us all these gems on Instagram and TikTok and everywhere else. Where can people find you? Yeah, so all of my pages are under K A D Y R O X Z, um, with um, Instagram having the additional Katie Rocks dot official. But everything's under Katie Rocks K A D Y R O X Z from Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, everything. Awesome. Well, we really enjoyed talking to you. Um, we hope we get to talk to you again soon in person. But until then, wishing you love and friendship. And we're going to take a break and get into our listener questions. All right. So we have a few questions, Tyler, um, from our listeners. Um, so I'll read the first one. Okay. Okay. She says, hey, girlfriends, I'm excited about this new show. Can't wait to hear all of the episodes when they come out. So I have a question about a current friendship. I have a friend that is insisting that we take a girl's trip this year, and I keep telling her that it just isn't going to work for me due to a number of things. Funds, school, I'm a new wife and mother. I just have a lot going on. But she's making it a super big deal, and I'm feeling like a bad friend. What should I do? Should I try to figure out a way to go so she doesn't think I'm being a bad friend and don't want to hang out with her? Help. This is really hard mm -hmm. because this is all about friendships evolving, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many phases we go through as as friends, new jobs, work, school, kids. Yeah. And so you have to get to the point where you understand that the friend that you met in college is not the same friend, you know, 15, 15 years down the line. Uh, so I've had experience with this. I'm going to just share mm -hmm. personally. Okay. You know, let's get into it. Get a little vulnerable here. <laughs> um, so I was single for six years, right? Before I 
was with my my amazing my amazing boyfriend. <laughs> um, and during that time, I did a lot of fun trips. I was always at my friend can message me and be like, "Hey, girl, let's go on a trip tomorrow," and I'm down. Um, or let's go to the club. Let's do this and let's do that. And then when I start getting into that serious relationship with him, I started to notice my friends were really upset with me, mm-hmm. and they're just like, "You don't go out to the club with us as much, you know? Like you don't want to do this. You don't want to do that." And so I had to have the conversation. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I love you. We could still go out. We could still do stuff. But you can't invite me to the Kappa house no more. Right. Like, I can't do, I can't, I can't. drink the jungle juice with y'all no I'm more. I'm sorry. Like, what you want from me? What do you want? It's it's really tough because some friends don't want to let that part of you go. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think, um, I think the conversation definitely needs to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's just going to have to accept the new reality and it might be hard but Mm -hmm. I don't think that you should break your back um in terms of finances in times of stretching yourself in terms of uh, stretching yourself thin um to go on this trip Mm -hmm. if you know you can't make it it just is what it is and the conversation needs to be had and the budget yeah and the budget so if she doesn't understand that then you might need to take a step back and Y'all might need to reevaluate some things, mm-hmm. um, but that's unfortunate. It is. And it does happen. You know, Often, yeah. when, when friends become mothers, when friends become wives, it really does shift the dynamic of your friendship. So, and that's something we're going to talk about later on in, mm-hmm. a, in a future episode. But our advice, what is our advice, Tyler? I don't know. My advice would be to have the conversation. You might need to have it more than once, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's still not going according to plan, you you have to really evaluate this friendship and determine, like, is this a friend I want to take to the next level of my life? Because not every friend can go with you to the next to the next level, no matter if you've been friends with them for 10 years, 15 years. If they're not willing to let go of that old you know, part of you, then they just they can't they can't come. And that's that on that. All right. So hoping that things work out with you and your friend, let us know how it goes. Um, Our next question isn't really a question. It's more of a scenario um, that I found online. It's a well-known kind of like an influencer online. And she posted this story. I was really surprised that she posted it, Um, but it was on her Instagram page and she titled it Wolf's Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, Mm. September 2022. It's really long, so I'm going to try to give you all the condensed version here. So, essentially, one of her best friends um, in the world, as she describes her, and business partner, calls her in distress. She needs to borrow $25,000. Not five dollars, not five hundred, okay. not five thousand, twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. And so the agreement is she's gonna have twenty five thousand dollars for three weeks and then she's gonna give it back. Right. So as time goes on, um, things keep falling through for her. And she's like, hey, I can't pay you back this week. I got you next week. And she keeps reemphasizing this that this is a really, really close friend. So this person is also in real estate. And so her deals keep falling through, apparently. So she's not getting the money that she thought she was going to get. So the person that wrote this said that she had a baby a year ago, um, as well as the friend. So they're new mothers, both new mothers and single. Um, And so, again, loaning this money, she said it was something that she really it was difficult for her because she was a new mother and she was single. Mm -hmm. Um. So as time goes on, she starts to see that this mother or that her friend and new mother is going on trips. Okay. She bought a $2 million dream home. All right. But whenever she reaches out to this friend for her money, she says, just give me a couple more weeks. Excuse after excuse. Time went on. Time went on. All right. So essentially, she now has zero (laughs) dollars. (laughs) <laughs> in terms of this payback. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's been a year and four months later. And the person that posted this said, it's really not even about the money at this point. It's about the fact that you are not communicating about the repayment. All the while you're posting on Instagram. I see you in Aspen. I see you with bottles of Wolf Kiko. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you living the life. And I'm over here, single mom out of 25K. So what would be your advice, Tyler, to this woman that's in this situation when it comes to her friend? Sounds like soon to be ex-friend, mm-hmm. but do you think this can be resolved? 
How long did they say it was? So it's been a year and four months since she loaned her this money. You're not getting that money back. <laughs> $25,000. you are not getting that money back. Okay, we go. I'll see you in court. I'll see you on Judge yeah. Judy. <laughs> be there or be square. Be there or be square. I'll see you on Judge Judy. Oh my gosh. I mean, at, I'm not a really big fan of giving friends money because I've seen, I've, I haven't done it personally, but mm-hmm. I've seen the effect that it can have on friendships. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was always taught, which I don't necessarily agree with, is that if you give your friend some money, you know, you really shouldn't expect it back. Because you don't know if they're going to be able to. You should just be doing it out of the goodness of your heart. Do you agree with that? I don't. I don't. I I, I owe you money and you pay it back. Mm-hmm. That's the what. That's the law of the land, baby. Mm. That's that's what they call word is bond. That's that's good character it and is. integrity. Mm-hmm. If I give you twenty dollars, you give me my twenty dollars back. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you my friend or my foe, my family, my mama, <laughs> my daddy, my child. If I give you twenty dollars, I'm gonna be looking for that twenty dollars back. Yeah, no, I, I I understand that. So what what would you say, Carmen? So um, this friendship is over, as far as I can see. At this point, is getting it's feeling legally to me. You know, uh, it's feeling <laughs> l- litigationy to me. <laughs> like that's the vibes uh-huh. because I just feel like now you're trying to play with me. Now you're trying to play games, and now you're being disrespectful because mm-hmm. you could at least have the audacity to put these ventures in your close friends mm-hmm. and not put me on the close friends list so I can't see you over in Aspen and over in Barbados mm-hmm. you're doing your activities and closing on your $2 million home when you owe me 25 k And that's not just a drop in the bucket. Mm-hmm. Like, I might be able to let it go if it was like... Two fifty, mm. <laughs> not not even a rat. Two fifty, no two fifty. Okay, um, but I got a newborn baby over here, so to me, it just shows me that you're really not my friend. Mm. I'm your friend, but you're not my friend, and I can't rock with that. So my advice to this person, even though she didn't ask us for advice because we found this on the internet, but. I would say that the friendship is essentially over at this point. I don't think it can be. There's nothing she can do but give her. The the twenty five k plus interest, no payment to plan, make it right, no nothing, just yeah, just out here in the wind. So, um, yeah, I think that's our advice for that. So, mm-hmm. Tyler, do you have any closing remarks before we close out our episode? of the Friendly Black Girl Podcast. There's been so many gems thrown here today. So please make sure that not only are you getting this information, you're letting your friends know to listen to the Friendly Black Girl Podcast mm-hmm. because we're really doing the real talk here. We're not seeing a lot of people, you know, really deep dive into these serious friendship conversations. Yes, much and needed so conversation. I would say make sure you you share the word and let everybody know because it's, it's just going to get real from here. Yep, it's going to get better and better. But until next time, remember that being a good sister... We'll keep you blessed, and having a good sister is a blessing. Cheers to that, girlfriend. Bye.